Yo, 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 what's good? It's your boy, Brother Royce, one time for your mind, though. And we are live with current events. And the hot topic of the day is the WAP video. Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, what's happening? Now, everybody who seen to have something negative to say about the video, uh, those who are seen as one-sided or misogynistic, and it's always mentioned that at the same time we're talking about the video for being too raunchy, we also have men out here, as Megan Thee Stallion said, who are quoting lyrics like slob on the knob, you know, or the long culture that we have of, you know, uh, you know, I want to, mm, 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 I want to do this, I want to do that, you know what I'm saying, we ain't got to get too raunchy because we know we got the kids watching, but... Making the style you made a point of, for as raunchy as the women got in that video, men have also been as raunchy with their lyrics as well. So for me, I like to bring different perspectives. I like to get outside of the paradigm. So I would like to remind all of us that these record labels and the people that are paying these black artists to do these music are not black people. So now you have black women fighting black men because of how they feel about the video. And then you have black men fighting black women because they like, listen, we're trying to get y'all to understand that if all you got to bring to the table is your fuzzy, then you ain't much of a woman. And now we got the issue in the middle, but let us remember this one thing. The same white people that's paying Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion to do these videos are the same white people that's paying the black man to be like the black woman is a bitch, a hoe, slob on my knob, and the same raunchy stuff that they do. And let me add that the white people that are paying us to do this stuff are married with children, with generational wealth, with whole entire families. In the original culture, in African culture, see, in Western culture, everybody puts the power in obtaining the title. It doesn't matter how you got it, it doesn't matter what you did to get it, the end goal is getting the title. It's not like that in original African culture, our Kebulon culture. In our Kebulon culture, a title is how well you carry the responsibilities of that title. So if, if you're a king, you're judged by how your kingdom runs, not by being a king. Oh, get him out of there. Look, look at this kingdom. This isn't a king. We don't respect him. We don't honor him as a king. You see what I'm saying? And it is the same thing with our women. Uh, the culture has become, uh, I, I see what people say when it says toxic masculinity. Um, I tend not to focus on toxic masculinity because there's such a huge absence of true masculinity. Let's get that definition. You know what I'm saying? How do people toxic. define toxic masculinity? Right. And I focus on where the problem is. The problem is the absence of masculinity and it's in the absence of true masculinity. True. That toxic masculinity is developed. But in the toxic masculine uh, uh, cultural umbrella, you have people who assert that a woman should submit to them because they are a man. And that's why you have the cheating, that's why you have the woman constantly leaving, because she can honor you as a man and love you as a man. You see that the women love the thugs and, and love the providers, the one who, no matter how they get the money, they bring that money home and she get her nice purse and she get her hair done. You see the women that love those guys, but you constantly see them swaying away and breaking away and, or, or, or they end up cheating or they end up getting into something and yeah they come back, yeah he's a man, yeah he's a provider, but the reason why that relationship fails to produce what our Kebulon culture, what African culture dictates the relationship between a masculine and a feminine should produce, which is salvation to a community, mm -hmm. whether you call that Haru or whatever, that's what the culture dictates to the community, should be created. Correct. Yeah, you know Families, what I'm saying? Yeah. The reason it fails to do anything because the man is only a king in title. True humility comes when a woman feels that true, and I'm going to use the word alpha male, but a leader. It is the energy of that man, the electromagnetic field coming off of that man's heart that makes a woman, even an alpha female, submit to that. It is who you are as a person, not the title that you carry. You know what I'm saying? But we got to make sure that our kings, our men, is equipped and have the mindset that mm. you are to build families mm, that right. make impacts in the community as well. Right. Because right now we're in this 
battle for a title, and that title ain't nothing but to express your power. Like, oh, I'm the biggest dyke here. Right, right, Because right, right. ain't none of y'all men got it like I got it. Right, but I'm right, just right, making right, a bum right. example. But there is a, a, a energy out there that's really wanting to be captured. And I think that is the family structure. Yeah. Kids, it ain't they fault that they running around and doing, you know, whatever promiscuous stuff because they're allowed the to not from the parents. Or they didn't learn nothing and that's how that results of it. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, man, we got and that goes back to I'm bomb. Right. The purpose, the duties of the man and the female. Right. When it comes to a family, because we got a lot of people out there making babies, you're birthing a whole new right. culture. Because right. that kid may be that one. Right. You know, some chosen ones out there, I believe. You feel mm -hmm. me? And a lot of people listen to Kodak. Right. You know, he coming from our city. Right. A lot of people listen to Trick Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Right. These people. A lot of people listen to XXX Tentacion. Yeah, and I'm not weighing it on the good or bad. I'm just right. saying that there's some chosen ones. Them. They could have. They could have done. What What could they have done with that influence okay. if they had the right beginning, the right parenting, the right structure, the right community, the right. Yeah. Culture, what you hear them rap about, and you like, oh, when you dismiss them, what you hear them rap about is what they got from the culture yeah. and the environment that replaced them in these ghettos. Which ghettos is what a German word for experiment or or the projects. Project you see what I'm saying? Right. They put us in certain ethos, certain environments to cultivate a certain being, so that even if a Haru is born from a strong mother, first wow. of all, the strong mother and the strong father is broken. That Isis Osiris thing is broken because the set energy is so strong in Western culture. So if a Huru already comes out bastardized. My boy took us to Egypt just now. You, you know, see what I'm saying? Did you see him do that just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Huru comes out bastardized, but you still have the, you know, Huru has many different manifestations. You still have the Huru that can be born to a, a woman who doesn't necessarily have the father. Because Joseph wasn't the father of that particular incarnation of Haru. You see what I'm saying? So uh, a special child can still be born to be a light to his community. But the environment is set up to destroy that. That's where you see your, your ex ex Tassion, dead, uh, Kodak Black, in jail, uh, uh, 21 Savage, who was starting to teach people financial literacy. They tried to deport him. And, and they, had to, they had to save him. But they was trying to deport him out of country. Uh, Nipsey Hussle, who was gunned down in front of his store, trying to teach people black economics. That is, is the, very it's scary. That environment. That's it's very the environment scary. that's creating the culture that we're living in. And the ideologies that we subscribe to. You want to say something, John? Yeah, yeah. So, two things. Number one, toxic masculinity. Yeah. You guys asked me about the definition. Yeah, yeah let's have that. So, based off of what we've been experiencing in our culture today, like this, this term really has become very, very pervasive, especially now today, right? Mm. So now um, the meaning of it is a cultural concept of manliness that glorifies stoicism, strength, virality, and dominance, and that is socially maladaptive or harmful to mental health. Men and women both suffer when toxic masculinity perpetuates expectations that are restrictive and traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, masculinity mm -hmm. typically deals with mm -hmm. male. All right. Right. And, and what's the first line of that definition? Read the first line of that it definition. It says a cultural concept. A cultural concept. A okay. and, and so like that's the idea, right? Cultural Con concept. Concepts come from a, a, a perception. Yes. Perception, right? Uh -huh. and, and just because you perceive something to be one mm -hmm. thing doesn't necessarily make it that only wow. to you. That's real. That's real. Right. Right. That's real. How was the that's black real. man perceived? And then, and, and then on top of that, once you multiply that times a hundred, mm -hmm. times a thousand, now it starts to right. Impression. Now it starts to shape a reality mm -hmm. for the person that would <laughs> um, be seen as Damn. that entity, like as mm -hmm. that um, word perception mm -hmm. over truth. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And oh, yeah. so and so like rather than take the time to understand. Uh, what men are going through or what they may be experiencing, why they feel the way that they feel, like what type of energy are, are they having to uh, deal with on a consistent right. basis, right. You'll, you'll take their experiences, shrink it down to these two terms, toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. and be ready to throw them away in the trash, right? Mm -hmm. right? And like, that's not cool. And then on top of that, you know, the people that we would like to listen to us, which would be the women, right? Like our women, whether it be mother, grandma, somebody, um, right. like a lot of people are willing to throw away men all because of 
um, their their trauma that they experience yeah. on behalf of one man or maybe a few, right? right? Like obviously there's there are some bad apples that's in the tree. You yeah. know, feel me? Yeah. But it doesn't define every single person that you come from. Right? Definitely don't. You know? So you have to be willing enough to be able to say, I'm not going to judge this man or even for men when it comes to being women. Right. By just this woman. right mm -hmm. by by what I've seen in the past or what's being presented to me by the overall culture because the overall culture doesn't define truth it only right. defines the perception and, perception and the reality of the current day and time right, right. right. That's because right. because truth is a streamlined that current, yeah. that that um, expands past any and everything mm -hmm. right that's right. one thing that would never change is the truth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. I definitely, see I'm a person, I listen to words. I listen to words because I understand that words are spellings and a lot of, uh, it ain't even a Western Eastern thing, words are spellings. When you hear a word or you hear a sentence or you hear a statement, it gives you a certain feeling and that feeling can change how you feel the whole entire day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I got, can I jump in on this one? Yeah, yeah, jump in. All right, so, so I actually recently just finished a book called How Emotions Are Made mm -hmm. by, uh, oh, wow. by Lisa mm -hmm. Feldman. Yep. And and a lot of what she talks about is this idea of constructivism, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's the idea that emotions, feelings are constructed based off of um, your culture and your environment and how you've been raised. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So that means yeah. whatever information you're taking in on a daily basis, whether it be from your parents or mm -hmm. the media or whatever, that will um, give your brain, uh, you could think of it like data sets mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. To, to try to predict right. um, your, your physical experience. Right. Predict and process what you're right. experiencing. Mm -hmm. Right, by by um, by um taking a look at the external context of, of what you're in yeah. and then trying to match how you, you're feeling physically against that mm -hmm. to say, oh, so uh, if you're um, in a room by yourself and you get butterflies, you're uncomfortable. Right. Right, like that's the type of information right. that you're yeah. starting to spit out. It's already giving you the mm -hmm. feeling. Exactly. So, like, it was kind of just going into what you were saying, yeah. like when you were talking about just the idea of concepts, right? Yeah. The idea of uh, yeah. these things being cultural plans concept. Plans mm -hmm. is and I want to remind the viewers that mm -hmm. culture is science, mm -hmm. art, and religion. Yeah. These are the three basic premises of what culture is. So Seven you got just in total. Yeah. You got science of all variety. You got art in all variety. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people think. Dancing, some people, dancing is art. Right, and right. then you have religion. Religion is the traditional method in spirituality. Right. You might not want to follow that traditional method. But right. one thing about culture, it is a way of viewing our um, existence in this whole realm. Right. So cultures are made and mm. people live through it. Yeah. One culture that I was trapped in was the stripper whole culture. Mm -hmm. I was going to the strip club getting free lunch, drinking, and mm -hmm. find out through this pandemic, I wasted a lot of money in them, man. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of power in the P. You know, the P, mm -hmm. let's just say the. The Yoni verse. The Yoni, because we definitely want kids to understand the Yoni this verse. is a friendly show. Mm -hmm. So, with that mm -hmm. being said, that whole culture, how will the stripper culture really evolve the black culture into becoming because you know everybody say black people in trials dance butt naked all the time and we but look we in a whole nother right. situation where the perversions is brought in mm -hmm. with another outlook That's so what I say. Yeah. You know, it ain't that much of an art and a beauty it's more yeah. of a perversion Her name was Sarah Bartman, daughter of South Africa. She went to Europe willingly, thinking she would find riches and fame. They fooled her. In Europe, she found humiliation, forced to be a spectacle because many of them had never seen a naked black woman's body. They nicknamed her Hot and Tot Venus. They were fascinated by her large, full breasts, big hips, buttocks, and big lips. They stared, touched, and laughed. She couldn't really be human because she didn't look like a white woman. Her skin was the deepest shade of the darkest chocolate. Her hair was a thick black cloud on her head. Doctors and medical students scribbled madly in their medical journals descriptions of her body.
She was later sold to a circus where she danced naked for the entertainment of white people. In their mind, her large breasts, buttocks, and her elongated labia made her inferior and oversexed. This justified their inhumane treatment of the black man and the black woman. No longer wanted in the circus, she became a prostitute and later died from loneliness, shame, and disease. She had been in Europe for only five years and was only 25 when she died. But her story doesn't end there. Even in death, she wasn't allowed dignity. Europeans were fascinated and obsessed with Sarah Bartman. When she died, they cut out her vagina, her brain, her skeleton, preserved them in jars, and placed them all on display along with the plaster of her actual body. For 160 years, people could walk into a museum, look at Sarah Bartman's vagina, her brain, her skeleton, and see what she looked like naked. In 1974, they took down the display, but they still kept her remains. It wasn't until 2002 that her remains were returned to her homeland and given a long overdue proper burial. Some would say hot and tot Venus aka Sarah Bartman was one of the first video vixens. Before television, before radio, Sarah Bartman became the blueprint for degrading and humiliating the black woman on a worldwide level. Sarah, this one is for you. I will not forget you. I will not allow others to forget you. I will make sure our people remember you and know your name. Black America, I find you guilty of murder. You're slowly killing the black woman with your blatant disrespect for black womanhood. We have pimped our daughters and mothers for platinum record sales, new cars with big rims and mansions, while Eve's daughters drop it like it's hot for crumpled dollar bills and the chance to be nominated the year's best video vixen. We spit on Sarah Barton's memory, and Harriet is turning over in her grave while Sojourner stands at the throne of the Almighty, praying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Do you? Do you understand what you have done, what you are doing? How many black women came before you and played the maid and prostitute so you wouldn't have to? How many of us have turned down roles because we valued how the world viewed black women? But not today's daughters. For a few dollars, they feed into America's jungle bunny fantasy, shaking their fangs half-naked with a smile upon their faces, but their eyes say, save me, save me from myself, and where is black America? We are on the sidelines, cheering because baby girl is no longer a resident of the ghetto. She's riding in Bentleys or Benz is draped in furs and diamonds, and the record label just bought her a fat house. But have we forgotten? Massa always kept his main hoe close to the big house, or a house to call her own, as long as she opened the door when he came knocking. And he will be coming back. It's so sad. Back then, we were forced to degrade ourselves to the level of being some man's whore. Today, we willingly degrade ourselves. The black woman has become America's number one whore. We fought that label for so many years, but here our daughters came along and solidified the deal. But many of us sold our daughters to them. We sold them for houses with jacuzzi-sized bathtubs and the chance to say, That's my baby on TV. Have we no shame? No guilt? We can't blame the white man for this one. In concert stadiums all over the world, our black men proclaim to the world that his women are bitches and hoes. It's so common, some of us think that this is our name and answer to it. We have forgotten our grandmother's pain, her struggle to carry the burden so we wouldn't have to. Do you hear the ancestors crying out, is this what we died for? I say no. Wake up, black woman. Wake up, black America. Take back your dignity. The power is in your hands. Strippers are mothers, man. We got to, mm -hmm. we can't deny the fact that they're mothers. Mm -hmm. But we got to actually, um, as a as a as a as a community, we got to figure out how to make our titles match our qualification. You're a baby daddy. Does that make you a father? Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're you're you birthed a kid, but are you a mother? You know what I'm saying? Right, or you're right. just a kid with a kid. 
Right. Know? So um, we got this thing in the media. Let's talk some current stuff, man. Current yeah. events, bro. Let's go back to culture. Yeah. Because a lot of the current events, everything, what culture does is culture is how you perceive everything else. It's how you perceive the media, it's how you perceive the stripper, they it's how it. you perceive the black male, it's yeah. how you perceive the black woman, it's the culture. So when you when you talk about that one definition, cultural concepts of manliness, it's whose perception are we looking through? Yeah. You see what I'm so saying? You gotta have a, you have right. The whose so glasses and whose lens are we looking through? It's, it's, it's important for us to understand the origin of how we're seeing things, cultural, cultural, because even the culture that you're under, it will dictate how you interpret your experiences. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, like, like the brother was saying, a lot of the culture that's developing now, which leads to the stripper culture, which also adversely leads to the pimp mm -hmm. culture. Because we, okay. I got a lot of homies that say it ain't nothing wrong with paying for it. At you this know point, what I'm saying? For it. Because mm -hmm. but, yeah. we're subscribing to that the concept the over sexualized concept of both the black male and the black female mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. uh example if you know i've had you know white women that have you know tried to talk to me whatever whatever you know what i'm saying interracial dating stuff like that um it was always uncomfortable for me because you know a lot of men would be like oh yeah i i i, I, I don't mind if a woman over sexualizes me but if it's like um hey you know my sexy black mendingo warrior and I'm like okay i guess that's supposed to be attractive so i right. oh i love your skin oh my god your skin is so beautiful and you start feeling like you're in a museum like oh my oh, god oh she worshiping that thing like this that this is so oh and i heard you guys have really big so it's like you're not even as opposed to a relationship with a black woman to where she loves you because of your soul and she has a personal connection with something she's seen in your soul. Uh, the, the, the culture that we're living under, it really objectifies both the black man and the black woman. And where does that come from? You know, I used to watch a show on TV called uh, Spartacus. And Spartacus was like old Roman culture. Mm -hmm. And they would have the, the like slaves. Thanks. Yeah. And it, it shows you where a lot of these ideologies come from because they would have the soldiers with the biggest, you know, things. You know, they would come in with masks on and they would, you know, have sex with the with the with the queens and stuff. And this was a pastime for them. Yeah. You know, the warrior with the biggest thing, he was the one who led and he was the one who got more food and so now the more sexually attractive you were as a man in that society, uh, the easier your duties were as a slave. And then you also got the tip off with the queen, which now you see interracial dating comes from that cultural perspective of I'm a slave, but I get the tip off with the white woman mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the highest position a slave can have. Mm -hmm. It's those cultural concepts. Right. Same thing with the black female. Okay, uh, the black the black slave that's not attractive has to work with the men and pick with the men, and she's wow. beat on and she's slapped and she's kicked and she's brutalized. But the attractive one, that's the one that gets to go in the house. And that's definitely a culture. She gets her hair permed and the white man is attracted to her, so it's he gives her a certain built off of, off of looks. that. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Looks, yeah. So the same concept that's defining uh toxic masculinity is the same culture that is defining that the highest status that a male or a woman can have is based on their sexual attraction. Attract attraction. You know what I'm saying? So now through that culture, we have our media, we have our music, and we just have to be conscious of that, you know what I'm saying? I have been confused because I thought the pretty girls had it easy in life. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, the pretty girls are the addicts, mm -hmm. drug addicts, and the depressed ones, mm -hmm. and, you know, and the ones that's, let's be honest, that carrying stable. a lot of STDs out here. The pretty girls are the ones that's raped by the masters. Yeah. When the master have friends over, he said, oh, I got a real pretty girl for you. You going to sell me that field? You going you gonna to give me these crops for 75% off? You know, I'm a poor, you know, southern sharecropper. Let me get it for 70% off. Well, you know, uh, we don't give deals on our crops. You know what? I know what you want. I got a real pretty slave for you. Mm. The rape culture. She's... <laughs> that thing sparks something in me because I'm a natural protector. But it's how it happens. 
I got a real pretty slave for you. And not only would this slave be raped by the master, but she would be raped by any guests he had, anyone he wanted. So now the other slaves who don't get that is mad at the pretty one because, oh, you're in the house all the time and they permed your hair because they have to perm her hair because the kinky hair scared the master's wife. So they had to perm her hair and make her look as close to white as possible. But on the other side, she's being raped, she's being molested. And then the, the husband's wife out of jealousy will come and beat her as, as opposed to that. So uh, the, the, the culture has us fighting each other, but we don't see that there is one common enemy yeah. between us all. And that is the culture that we subscribe to. Subscribe to and allow, allow, allow. Each other. You know, into our homes. I just want to say a look quick piece, and I ain't trying to get into it, but yeah, that rape culture evolved into the new, like, the prettiness came with mm -hmm. the youthfulness, mm -hmm. and now we full into pedophilia and eating babies. I just saw, I saw some weirdo women stuff. snatch yeah. because of how pretty they are. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of weirdo percentages on that. And dealing with politicians being involved with the trafficking. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anyway, I didn't want to get into that. I really mm -hmm. want to get into something a little more lighter. You know, the power mm -hmm. of the P is real mm -hmm. predominant. Mm -hmm. You know, the percentages just show that people uh, uh, mm -hmm. engage in sex and violence. Mm -hmm. So women are now allowed to push sex. Amber Rose had something called a slut walk. Yeah. That was accepted by a lot of women. Yeah. As in, this is okay, cool, and profitable. Mm -hmm. That's that P, profitable, profitable. percentage. Mm -hmm. But um, we also got, wow, mm -hmm. wet mm -hmm. ass P. Mm -hmm. And um, that right there, a lot of women understand they can use their femininity to get what they want. Mm -hmm. I ain't mad at that. But now when it becomes a booming business and you're wanting to do that to build families, I don't know if that goes together. It doesn't. You know, because you're really selling yourself. And then I even have a, it's your life, baby. It's your life. But if you have teenage kids and you at this point decide to get into the porn industry, uh, as a teenage boy, I wouldn't want nobody presenting my mom that they're able to see to me, I wouldn't, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that ain't my mom getting plowed. Mm -hmm. That's not a smart decision, in my opinion, women with power. Yep. Teenage kid, when you just decide to get into porn, that's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. And then even the, 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 um, the selling of sex mm -hmm. and um, even the, the, the swag of having the feminine energy over the man, the old swag. Mm -hmm. can become toxic too. Right. We done gave y'all the male toxicity. Right, right. So, so, so don't think that's where it stopped. Right. You know, don't think that it's the man's fault. There's you know what I'm saying? Because toxic energy you, as well yeah. as toxic masculine energy. Yeah, it's definitely. Both from, yeah, see it from this crazy culture. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I honestly think that um, a lot of it is just a loss of uh, integrity. Yeah. You know Integrity is a big word for that. Yep. I think mm -hmm. it's people who are just willing to accept what's easy. Yeah. Right? Just because and you know, like as as men too, maybe not us, but there's some level of responsibility that needs to be had. You need to be. Right. right? But going back to slut walk, is exactly. important. Going back to slut walk. They're putting integrity in that which is demeaning. Right. So you know, I so, think you're right about that integrity. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so it's like we we have to understand that we help build in some ways. Maybe not us specifically, but right. just men in general have helped build this idea that has allowed for the evolution of things to be what it is today. Right. Right. Like if we um, held it down a little bit more, mm -hmm. if we had more self-control, mm -hmm. if we necessarily didn't run around mm -hmm. just dropping our, our seed everywhere mm -hmm. we, we stop, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, that mm -hmm. integrity and that honesty as men, and honestly, there are gonna be men out there who are gonna be like, man, bro, bump with bro saying, bro, it's mm -hmm. all about getting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that what I want. Exactly, mm -hmm. but that's the Feeding problem. Feeding lust. And right, and mm -hmm. that's the problem, right? Like, at the end of the day, it's easy to give into your, your, your desires. What's hard is to give it up 
for the mm. sake of something way better. So, mm. yeah. Right? Something that's gonna be much better. You're talking about building a purpose. A, a, exactly, a purpose, mm -hmm. a character, mm -hmm. something that can be stood upon. Mm -hmm. So when people listen to you, mm -hmm. they, 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 there's nothing that they can pull up against you because you lived your life the way you ought to live right. um, with the purpose that you have in mind to do what you need to do. And that sets the standard for your children. Your exactly. children learn and everybody they are, from what they see from the parents. Exactly, exactly. So like, even though we're all 100% responsible for our own decisions we're also we also should be looking at responsibility in a sense as dang i have to make sure that i'm living accordingly because what if a young man sees me as a man yeah. doing something that i speak out against then now i'm the hypocrite yeah. i give and i confuse him yeah. and i give him the perception the idea that mm -hmm. this is okay yeah. you feel me i, I lo love my rappers yeah just but, yeah that's a that's a good example with right. that thing. exactly mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i love my rappers yeah. but on one end and like we can talk about both male and female on yeah. one end that's what we gotta deal with exactly. you got mm -hmm. Lust, a cluster of powerful women rappers. Right, women, women rappers. Women experience that. Yeah, okay. facts, facts. What, make, what Megan Thee Stallion said was right. It was correct. Men do make the same songs 100%. because I think that I think the male version of WAP is Chris Brown wet. Eh, it's almost the same song, bro. Three yeah. six mafia, bro. You see what I'm saying? Let my nuts go. Easy, it's the same song. Come on, bro. So it, it takes, it does take a lot of self accountability. 100%. And, and, and so now, like, when we have this present, like, a lot of our male rappers are married. They got yep. families. But yep. yet, if you listen to the songs that they put out, yep. it's like you would have thought these boys were single doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And now, even our women have children, mm -hmm. right? And they have uh, husbands. They're somebody's mother, right? right? Putting out certain songs, right. and you wanted to talk about this. Yeah, Cardi right. B. Cardi B. Cardi B and came out and said that she right. said the song "WAP." She was defending the lyrics, right? But in the same breath, she said she would never let her children listen to that song. Right. right. I, like, I'll even read you the quote right here. Mm -hmm. Like, so like, this is the title of the article. You can look it up, Google it. It says Cardi B defends WAP against those who claim song is too vulgar. It's for adults. So this is the quote. No, of course I don't want my child to listen to this song and everything but it's for adults, said the rapper who is mom to a two-year-old daughter mm -hmm. in culture. Now, that has to ring a lot of bells in people's head. It's like, so you wouldn't let your own child mm -hmm. listen to this, and you can say it's for adults, but you right. can't control the fact right. that other little children are going to consume this information. And my, mom just, work, my mom works in the daycare, is, and in the ahead. daycare, the yeah. four-year-old from her daycare was singing the song. Why? Right, and that's problematic. Mm -hmm. That's problematic, mm -hmm. you feel me? Because now, you as a rapper are gonna try to give up responsibility, saying, well, that's not my child. Oh, no, nah, that's on y'all. I mean, but you put it out there. there. You created it. And you told exactly. everyone that you can have everything you want in life by giving this up, by right. having this to offer. Right. Man, and those world. adults that okay that song is only for adults right the adults that that song is for are mothers they have children mm -hmm. so if they listen to that shit their children is going to learn from them exactly. and yeah. it's going to be playing in the house right. with children right and so it being for adults does right. not negate the fact that children are still going to have right. it and also too like the lyrics um like you, like we have to start playing ourselves and, and thinking that what we consume doesn't affect how we act mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so like let's say the child doesn't hear the song but they're gonna look at how you act yeah right they're gonna look at how you present yourself and they're gonna find your videos they're gonna find your music they're, they're gonna, gonna get older one day you feel me so, so at the end of the day you know and like this isn't an attack on women by no means right, right. because like i said earlier right. this is about men also having to be held accountable as yep. well for what we've it's, done it, it's a cultural community thing right. we have to stop accepting the fact that people want to exploit us right. for our natural gifts talents abilities and appearances Thanks. for the sake of making a dollar right Thanks. i look at some point we we just have to say man that's not worth it right and the reason why we haven't seen any change today is because nobody's willing to sacrifice to that level. Yeah, when we talk about accept the sex sales idea. Exactly. All right, well, that's the easy way to get on. We're in survival mode. Exactly. You feel me? And so now like when you look at the Martin Luther King Juniors and the guys from the past and the women from the past, 
they understood what it meant to sacrifice. Right. They actually had lives to give up. Now we have everything at our fingertips mm. and it's easy to access everything, mm. but nobody wants to work hard for it. They want to find right. an easy way to get there. You right. feel me? And by all means, I get it. And, I, and I'm not, I can't speak to everybody's experience. All I can speak to is mine. Mm. So I don't want to demean anybody's experience or belittle it, right. but you are greater than your current situation. Damn right. I like you that. You feel me? We are much more than what we and, have become. And I believe that that word integrity is the solution to yep. this problem. Yep. You know? So this is Light Workers Podcast. This is only part one. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Definitely stay tuned. This is a whole entire series, okay, dealing with the black masculine and the black feminine. And hopefully we can heal the dynamics between the two. All right? Don't be scared to comment and like. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, and if you comment and you got any questions, we'll answer it on the next video. Thanks, thanks. So it's your boy, Brother Royce, one time for your mind, dude. Coach Ross Ambassador, David Miller. Jair, the media guy.